Thank you, Madam President. I rise to explain my vote. Uh, Please thank do. You. Um, I'm going to be voting no on Senate Bill 1826, but just wanted to, I think, just make some overall comments with regard to the budget. I think there are many of us that wish we could stand here tonight and say that you know, we were proud of this budget and that, that we were able to vote for this budget, that we were proud of the process um, under which this budget came about. I personally wish I could stand here and say that I believed that this budget put the needs of Arizonans first. I wish I could say this budget was the best deal that we could have done for Arizonans, but I can't say that. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be true. I can't say that this budget was bipartisan or fair or transparent because this budget is none of those things. Instead, this budget was crafted behind closed doors, ignoring the, the input of real Arizonans, ignoring even the input of the Democrats in this chamber. Let's remember the majority party has a one member majority. One would think that would mean more bipartisanship this session, but unfortunately, Republicans chose less bipartisanship. We could have had a transformational budget to rebuild and revitalize Arizona, a fiscally responsible budget that pays down our debt, a budget that invests in our public schools, provides teachers much needed raises, updates and repairs our state's roads and bridges and more. Instead, we have decided to prioritize welfare for the wealthy forcing Arizonans to subsidize the lifestyles of the rich with this radical tax cut plan. Democrats had been more than willing to sit down and negotiate a budget that would have provided real tax relief across the board to working families, not a tax cut aimed at the top wage earners. Arizona doesn't need more tax cuts that will only help the wealthiest Arizonans. After a decade of slash budgets resulting in underfunded schools, a teacher shortage and crumbling roads, we had a real opportunity to meet the needs of our students, senior citizens, and our most vulnerable. Arizona needed to fund COVID relief for families and small businesses and invest in services and programs that benefited all Arizonans. The Republican budget does none of these things. Instead, we have a budget that continues to rely on accounting gimmicks and budget gymnastics to create a balanced, balanced budget on paper. We have a $2 billion surplus right now. Many low and middle income Arizonans have faced extraordinary challenges after the last year. Rather than helping them, this budget will give them about a $15 tax cut while giving multimillionaires a $46,000 tax cut. I'm unclear on how this is fiscally responsible. The wealth wage gap is only increasing. Workers, particularly lower wage earners, have seen their wages stagnate over several decades, despite overall rising productivity and national income. In fact, the main driver of growth in personal income for Arizonans is the increased minimum wage and the federal stimulus. Combined with rising costs for health care and child care, increased worker stress and riskier retirements without pensions, we have seen a widening gap in measures of well-being, such as life expectancy, deaths from suicide and drug overdoses, and social isolation. Arizona Republicans' response to all of this, more tax cuts for the wealthy. Taxes are the price we pay to live in a functioning society. For the roads we share, the schools we send our kids to, the first responders we call in emergencies. Particularly at the state and local level, many government services directly impact residents and businesses, education, health care, water, sewer services, collection of trash, building, maintaining roads, fire, and police protection, the judicial system, the correctional system, et cetera, et cetera. Our economy is growing. Our revenues are strong. We should stop with the austerity budgets that began during the Great Recession. This type of budgeting is simply no longer necessary. Over the past decade, calls for increased funding for education, transportation, and social services have been met with replies of, we just don't have the money. Well, we have the money. And instead of making true investments in our infrastructure, we have a massive giveaway to the wealthy. We had a real opportunity to help Arizona's working families restore, recover, and rebuild from the COVID-19 pandemic. 
A true Arizona budget would have raised teacher pay, made higher education more affordable, extended health care to uninsured children, addressed affordable housing shortages, reformed an antiquated unemployment insurance system, invested in critical infrastructure, and would have protected and uplifted the most vulnerable Arizonans. Sadly, Democrats have been entirely shut out of this budget process. Rather than sit down and develop a budget that represents the entire state, our colleagues were more interested in giving out welfare for the wealthy. This entire process has been a shameful disregard for our duty as legislators and an insult to Arizona voters who expect better from us. Instead, they've seen us retaliate against teachers and Arizonans for their vote to increase funding for public schools by making the mega rich pay their fair share. And as usual, Democrats are expected to sit here and take it, to have no input while we force hardworking Arizonans to pay for the lifestyles of the richest a year in which families lost their jobs, lost their homes, lost loved ones to COVID. It's been beyond cruel. Arizonans deserve better. They really do. They have all sacrificed so much for the better of our state in this last year, and this is how we reward them. To those Arizonans up watching, to those that will read about this in the morning, I'm sorry. You deserve better. We deserve better. Arizona deserve better. We could have done so much more to invest in this great, great state, and we squandered this opportunity. And with that, I vote no.